So no big surprise again, our GE appliances break down once more. We've already uh, broken this handle up here. Um, they put uh, one screw here, one screw here into plastic and it's very cheap. And I don't know if it's the microwave itself that is causing this plastic to get super brittle, but it is uh, definitely breaking away. So I pulled on this the other day and it just broke apart. And uh, I've pretty much had it with GE appliances. They just, you know, we've had issues with our fridge as well. Um, not so many issues with the dishwasher or the stove, but the microwave and the fridge have been rather disappointing. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, pop the door off its hinges and um, there's like a little uh, spring-loaded hinge right here that I gotta figure out how to pop off again, but this door will come off these two hinges and then we will um, essentially pop this plastic trim off all the way around and there will be screws under there for me to access where that handle is and uh, we'll see if my uh, trusty drywall screws work for this again. It worked on the first time and it's held like a champ so far. So um, if it doesn't work, I actually under warranty this door broke on me and so I have an extra door and we'll probably replace it if I totally, if there's nothing for that drywall screw to grab onto in this area. So I popped this little plastic trim off and you know I suspect that most microwaves have some you know type of trim like this um, you know you need to be careful when prying this off because you know this is a really thin cross-section area as well as here and even though this plastic is really flexible um, you could potentially uh, fracture that so I used a butter knife and I pried a little bit this way, not too hard, um, just to get this lifted up to where I could pull it because it kind of just snaps in place. But um, you definitely don't want to break this. Um, kind of see, I've kind of messed it up over the years um, as I've had to pull this off a couple times. Um, but once you get that off, you know, you are left with kind of this frame that's around the entire door and uh, we've got these little screws all the way around the perimeter that we're going to have to uh, pop loose so that we can access the the handle screws um, that are that are hidden over here um, so once we pop this off then uh, we should be able to access those screws. So we got that door off and it is kind of held in place by these little tabs that you can kind of pull back and it will pop that door free. Just be real careful with this plastic. I mean, everything is made out of plastic these days to where stuff is going to crack. And in GE's case, they just love, they love to use very brittle plastic. And uh, to this day, I don't know why they do that. It must be cheaper. Anyways, you can see where I threw that drywall screw in previously up here, and that's held like a champ. Down here, we still got the original screw. 
We're going to pop that out and then see if we can't salvage um, this door. So if it doesn't, you know, like I said before, we'll pop the new door on. The unfortunate part is, is that GE, when little pieces like this break, they don't have spares for it. They'll send you an entirely new door. And uh, this will go to the landfill and uh, continue to just sit there and never break down. All right, so this is a little piece that just broke out of there. And uh, we are going to try to drive that drywall screw through there. And hopefully those threads bite in the hole. And they're pretty long to where it's going to go pretty deep in there. So, you know, we'll have enough shear strength in that parent material. But these little, I don't know, these drywall screws are uh, one and a fourth inch long coarse thread which is nice you want it to bite um, however I don't know if there's a diameter on this but there's a part number in Blue Hawk um, who knows maybe for drywall screws there's a standard diameter on that screw but I don't know the diameter um, I just know that it's you know it's pretty small so that should bite and uh, um, I won't film myself screwing that in, it's pretty self-explanatory, but once I do, I'll see, you know, do we have a good fit. I will show this before I screw in, you know, you see this is where it's touching the, the parent material that it's going to go into. You know, that's a pretty good length that, you know, I'm probably going to get maybe three to four uh, threads engaged, which, you know, for most, for the amount of load that we apply to this, that's plenty fine. Um, one thing I will recommend is you want to hand screw this in. Do not use power tools on this stuff because you will strip, you'll over torque it and you'll strip your plastic and you won't have a bite. screws in. Um, we're going to check just to see how solid that handle is. And uh, that's what it looks like. And honestly, it feels pretty solid. There's no slop or anything. You definitely, you definitely do not want this. Tessie, Tessie, come on now, girl. You definitely don't want this to be able to wiggle back and forth because here's the issue this bolt pattern that we have right here where it's one right here one right here you get a prying load if there's any lateral movement on this handle so what that means is um, you know when you pry you can I mean you can skyrocket those loads that are being reacted through these fasteners so, you know, when you pull this door out, you really only want it to be in tension, but, you know, you still want it tight so that you're not prying about an edge. So if that's pretty much preloaded, hopefully you won't have any issues. This has worked for me in the past, and uh, hopefully this will be sustained. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the, the door, the rest of the door back together, put all the pieces back on, fit it up, and we'll do a, a fit check, see how you know, the new handle works, so. check. Hopefully this thing won't just tear off. Well, let's see. Oh, she works just perfectly. And we do it again and again and again. 
Just kidding. But yeah, that trick worked. And uh, like I said before, this isn't really too hard to replace. It's not too hard to fix. You know, it's just whether or not you want to try to salvage these cheap parts that GE continues to make. And if you want to continue um, to try to resurrect this and save it, because I think even if you're out of warranty to buy a door, you know, it might be upwards of like $100 to $200. And that is expensive. At that point, you might as well just go and buy a brand new microwave um, at that time, point in time. Um, but, you know, for me, if I don't have to throw it out, I try to save whatever I can. And if it still works, which it does, the microwave itself works perfectly. It's just the cosmetic cheapities that they continue to put on here. It can be so frustrating. Um, so I hope this video helps you. Um, if, uh, if it does, just let me know. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot them in the comments. Um, I generally try to reply pretty quickly to any questions or thoughts that you all have. Um, I really do like to interact with you all. It's fun for me. And if this helps anybody else, um, that's, that's my goal in these videos. All right, have a good one.